This PC build series is brought to you by Antec, Apotop, and Patriot Memory. Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and it's finally part 10 of my $500 triple boot PC build series and in this video we're going to build everything and also press the power button for the first time. So the first step in the build process is to prepare your motherboard which in this case will be to install the processor which is very simple. You just have to take the CPU, align it within the CPU socket itself, close the door, put the latch in, and then the black plastic cover will come right off. And then the next step is to prepare our memory. We have two DIMMs to put into the slots. You just open up the latches on both sides, align the stick in the slot, push down for the latches to close back up, and then do the same thing for the second stick. Next is actually to put the heatsink fan combo unit onto our motherboard with the Intel stock fan and heatsink combo unit. It's actually really simple. You just line up the four little clear, semi-clear rather, screws into the four holes on your motherboard around the CPU area and then you just close the screws down and you are good to go. And of course you should align it so that your fan cable isn't too long or too short so that is how I aligned it. Now that the motherboard has been prepared it's time to install the IO back shield that came with our motherboard into the back of the case. So you just align it so that the PS2 ports are towards the top of the case as shown on your screen and then you just have to push in all throughout the edges of the IO back shield until everything snaps into place and you are good to go. After that, I continued with the basics by installing the 3.5 inch hard drive into one of the two 3.5 inch drive bays. It's very simple, you just align it to where the screw holes are now visible and you screw it into place. Then I did the same thing with our 2.5 inch SSD which went right under the hard drive cage which was pretty convenient. After that, it was time to finally mount the motherboard. But first you have to install the standoffs into the case, which do come included in the screw bag that came with the case. Once all the standoffs are in place, you can put the motherboard over it, making sure that your rear ports are properly aligning themselves with your I.O. back shield that you installed earlier. Once you do that, you can go ahead and screw everything into place, which makes sure that everything is nice and secure. Next up is the video card installation, which is very simple. You just have to put it into the slot after removing the two metal covers for our rear expansion slots. And then you just screw it into place so that it doesn't move around too much. And now it's time to install the power supply and get everything cabled up. So we just start by mounting the power supply in the top of the case. It should slide into place just fine and you have four screws on the back of the case to keep everything securely mounted. Once the power supply is nice and secure, it's time to unbundle all of the cables, organize them a little bit, and start plugging everything into the motherboard. I usually start with the 20 plus 4 pin power connector, which is the longer power connector that comes bundled onto the cable. And then I also go with the 4 pin CPU power connector. Since our video card is powered by the PCI Express slot alone, we don't have to worry about plugging anything into that. Any leftover cables I just shoved into the 5 and a quarter inch drive bays to help with cable management a little bit. Next up, I connected all of the front panel connectors onto the motherboard. For this, you will probably have to open up the manual, which is really the only time I open the manual for this particular build, because you have to know where to plug each of the little connectors onto the respective pins on the motherboard. It's not the easiest thing to do. Um, I guess I would actually recommend doing this before you install the video card, because the video card's actually in the way a little bit, so it does make it a bit tough but you can still do it if you're really careful and if you take your time. Now that everything is connected, it's time to go ahead and power everything on for the first time. As I did mention in part one, the original power supply that I was sent actually started smoking when I first turned it on. So I went out and got a different supply, which is what you saw me installing and everything worked just fine. So it's time to sort of clean things up a little bit regarding the cables and then we closed the side panel. Here's a quick look at the back of the case with everything installed. You can see our video card, our power supply, as well as our rear ports from our motherboard. And that's essentially it with the build. It is time to now install Windows, then Linux, and then Mac OS X. 
If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that is it with the video, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all very soon.